if you are interviewing for the role of the release training engineer, what are five frequently asked questions that you should expect in your interview? Now, the first obvious question, which you should consider is number one, what is the role of a release train engineer? Or as a release train engineer, what has been your role? That's a question that you are not going to miss. And of course, expect a question around how to handle conflict as a release train engineer. And thirdly, you want to also expect a question on what uh, step do you take to ensure a successful PI planning? And fourthly, you want to also expect questions around how do you manage dependency across multiple agile release train? And then finally, which were three and five questions today, uh, the fifth question we're gonna be looking at today is how do you promote a culture of continuous improvement within the agile release train? For those who are not familiar with the release train engineer role, a release train engineer is more of a chief scrum master. And if you've not actually safe certified, then you might not actually uh, fit well into the conversation we are going to have today. But I always say uh, anyone who is not safe Scrum Master certified, if you're into Agile, then you're missing out about 70% of the market. So you want to uh, actually join our next safe Scrum Master certification training. That's going to be the 21st of April. But this weekend, which is starting the 14th of April, we are going to be delivering a release train engineer certification which is why we're dedicating this Monday to deliver five top questions to expect in a release training engineer interview. And one of the things you're going to notice is that these questions are very easy, right? So most of them, uh, there's some people that are a bit seasoned into leadership. You should not only focus on uh, getting a role as a scrum master, you can also level up and take a role as a release training engineer, which is more of the chief scrum master. Now, without wasting much time, uh, I want you to hit the like button, subscribe button. Our Mondays are going to be dedicated for uh, more of program level interviewing. This is for Agile coaches, release training engineer. A release training engineer is a coach at the program level. So a release training engineer play a role more of a program level coach. Similarly, what an Agile coach would do. So if you're also interviewing as an Agile coach, then you should expect also this type of questions. It might be generic, not really tied to the art as I'm going to be discussing, but you can also leverage the insight we are going to share from this video. So let's go ahead and uh, tackle the first question. Or oh, what is your role as a release train engineer? Or oh, what has been your role as a release train engineer? Now, before you answer this question, my advice on how to tackle any question is always like, Try to make it practical and try to personalize it, try to own the process, right? So this question, I'm going to answer it. In my role as a release train engineer, I have facilitated all program levels event. I facilitated all program level events and all the ad events as well. I also make sure I create alignment across the ad and I facilitate the PI planning. Most importantly, I enable collaboration between uh, the portfolio and the team level. So I think my role as a release train engineer has been super important to actually help <clears throat> promote effective agile implementation within uh, an enterprise environment. All right. So alternatively, if you want to go a bit low, you can just simply say that uh, my role as a release train engineer has just been to ensure successful execution of the agile release train. Uh, the release train en engineer is the one that facilitated events around agile release train, which is the program level. So that's also a short response to that. Um, a release train engineer acts as a chief scrum master uh, for the art, art when we talk about art is the agile release train and provide guidance to scrum masters, product owners, and all the teams as well. So that's the role of a release train engineer. Now, question number two for today is how do you handle conflicts within the agile release train? How do you handle conflicts within the agile release train? Now, 
as an ROT, it's important to identify conflict early in the work, right? And this involves active listening, asking uh, clarity question, and facilitating discussion. But this is a generic question. Now, the generic approach to addressing conflict, it's about what? Uh, listening to party, asking powerful questions to be able to uncover and, and redirecting people to focus on a common goal, which is a business value. But for you to effectively answer this question, you want to use a scenario. Now, one of the typical scenarios you will see at the program level is going to be disagreement across uh, uh, stakeholders, most uh, especially the conversation between, let's say, um, uh, uh, the pro the program managers and the team. Let's say that the program manager, or I'll, I want to just use, let, let me talk as if I'm answering the question, right? So that you can actually pick from uh, the approach in which I'm targeting the question. Now, this is a scenario, um, which is a real life scenario. The management wanted a team to actually take on a future in the middle of the PI which was kind of already conflicting because within the PI, we've already established the capacity. The team was already working and management called team B and said, okay, we want you to take on this feature. And the scrum master of team B actually um, uh, resisted to say, you know what, uh, we already have full capacity. We are not able to take on this team. Now, as a release training engineer, I'm the middle person between the team and the management. So the scrum master came over to me and said, okay, look, uh, management is asking us to take this, but we already have full capacity. And besides, I don't really see the importance of PI if we are going to be added, uh, adding a major uh, a future like this, which actually take us out of our scope. And looking at the product roadmap, uh, the the uh, the future we're working on is expected within the next two weeks. So there's no way we can actually handle this. Now, management wasn't really happy. As a registration engineer, I also try to work with management to get them clarify and also try to give them uh, a rationale why Team B could not actually take that uh, uh, future right now, but management wasn't really satisfied, right? So management actually escalated it to the uh, portfolio level. And then the Scrum Master and myself, the registering engineer, were summoned to the portfolio level and why we are resisting to uh, take the future. And we had to show clear indication that that future was not prioritized. Uh, according to the prioritized program backlog, the future Team B is working on is very critical to business delivery. And if they start working on that, many other teams are going to suffer. It's not just about them. And leadership was able to understand with uh, our rationale and let us work, continue working on the story. Now, that's a clear conflict. What 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 was the key approach there? The key approach there was that we help uh, management and leadership to see a reason why if we ship away from our focus, we are going to run into risks, right? So that actually gives you a value there as a good release training engineer that you understand your work and you understand what you're doing. Now, the third question we're going to hand it today is, what step do you take to ensure successful PI planning? What step do you take to ensure successful PI planning? Now, I'm going to focus on about five different aspects, which uh, you as a release training engineer can institute to ensure that you have effective PI planning. Number one, communicating the PI schedule and objective to all participants in advance, right? So you don't wait until maybe the last day. Now, if you work in a safe environment, you realize the last um, uh, iteration is called the IP iteration, which is the period where the team should already start having an idea of what they're going to work uh, in the PI. So you communicate the PI planning together way ahead of time, and everyone should have them in the calendar. Secondly, ensure that all teams and stakeholders are prepared and have the necessary information and tools. Let's say, for instance, if you're facilitating your PI on Miro, you're facilitating on the... A PI board or moral board, you're facilitating it in your ADO board. Make sure that every team should be aware. And you communicate through team. I communicate through team uh, with my Scrum Masters, right? So when we talk about you communicating as a release training engineer, your main point of focus are the PO and the Scrum Masters. And you also, at the program level, you work directly with the 
uh, system engineers and the program managers. Now, the third thing you also do is that uh, you facilitate the PI planning event by keeping everyone on track and ensuring that the planning objectives are met. So you coordinate, facilitate, make sure the breakout room is steady, make sure everyone is uh, ready on day one with the uh, draft plan and all of that. Now, the second, the, the fourth thing you want to do is that you identify and resolve all impediment arising during uh, the planning. What are impediments? Impediments could be more of this too much dependency. You can also see uh, the same iteration dependency when the team put their uh, work on their program board. Then you can also see common antipathy like there is mismatch between um, capacity and velocity when you look at plan work. Those are some of the things you try to ensure that uh, we avoid. All right, now, number five, you ensure that output of the planning event is captured, shared, and understood by the relevant party. And the way you do it, most of the you get the, the, the PI objective. And when you have your Scrum of Scrum, or what is now called coaches sync, what you do is that you ensure that um, what the team is working on is alignment with the PI objective, ensure that the team is not receiving work directly from stakeholders so that we can actually work in alignment. Question number four, how do you manage dependency across multiple agile release train? All right, now this is a big technical question we are assuming that although you are a release train engineer, you are also working in collaboration with other release train, which means that just right above you, there will be a solution train. A solution train exists when we have multiple agile release train while working on the same product. So in that case, what are you going to do? Now, what you focus is on collab. Now you talk about collaborating with other RTEs. This is not going to be collaborating with uh, your own app, which is the 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 agile release train you're working on. It's going to be you now focus on collaboration with other RTEs, which is um, cross app dependency. What are the major point where all the ads are dependent. And now at that level, we also gonna have the act scene where we meet and look at how our work is, is dependent and how our planning are correlated. And that is also gonna help in the prioritization of our ad board or of our program backlog. All right, very important. Facilitate regular meetings with uh, ROTEs to review, update and dependency. Communicate changes, if there are changes with dependency. Now we're talking about dependency now at the level of art because you're comparing it across art. So you work with team also to ensure that, to ensure they are aware of planning for dependency and also you, you're the facilitator, but your team is the one actually doing the work. So while you're coordinating at the level of different art, you're also ensuring that the teams within your own art is aware of what is going on. And the team within your own art is represented by your scrum masters, uh, team coaches, and then your POs. And the question number five, what we're going to answer today is, how do you promote a culture of continuous improvement within agile release training? All right. So uh, one thing you want to understand is that continuous improvement it's more of what we call flow, right? In 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 the in uh, scale agile flow, it's a very powerful concept, and you see this also reflected in seek in safe six point zero. So, flow is is simply like how do you avoid bottleneck? Number one, encourage feedback from the team. Feedback from the team, what is going on? Because most often stakeholders may reach out directly to the team and that actually disturb work. And if the team does not give that feed uh, back, back to the ROTE, so that the ROTE is the one facilitating all the program event for that to be addressed, that will continue to be a problem, right? So facilitating regular retrospective using the inspect and adapt to make sure that all problems that may be hindering progress of work are identified and action items are, are, are also identified and added as enablers in subsequent PI. Uh, you also want to ensure that you encourage experimentation and willingness to try new approaches, right? This is about our uh, variability. You don't want to say, oh, you cannot do this. If uh, a team is 
are adopting an approach that is actually helping them to knock out work as fast as possible, we want to encourage that. Foster a culture of collaboration where team and stakeholder work together to identify and address issue, very important. Celebrating success, it's also very important. All right, so we knock out our five questions for really strain engineer or agile coach or program level coaching within the safe environment for today, Monday. And remember, our weekends are Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we are going to be having our really strain engineer certification training. And this is going to start at um, 2 p.m. Central Time. It's eight hours every day, fr Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You want to be part of that class. And if you definitely want to join that class, uh, simply because you watch this video to the end, simply send me the text message, I am interested, and you are going to have a $25, uh, not 25% discount for that class. All right. Thank you. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I see you in our next video that comes up on when is it? Thank you and see you on the next video.